Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you and today I want to talk about pimping knives or modifying knives. Now this is going to be a new introduction. In my original video uh, I didn't realize of course that uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny was going to post a similar video before I could get this uploaded. So this is going to be a bit of an introduction saying this. Uh, I know there's another video from Epic Snuggle Bunny out there. I decided I was going to post this anyway. I'm sure I'll say some things different from him. Now I haven't watched his video yet but I will here shortly uh, and so I'd love you to watch Watch both and even if you want to weigh, down, weigh in in the comments with some of the differences of opinions that he and I have. Uh, maybe we say the exact same thing but I highly doubt that. Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video and today I want to talk about pimping your knife or modifying your knife, usually by anodizing or refinishing various surfaces, sometimes even some, some light. Uh, mill work being done to it or adding a different feature or a different or moving a feature to a different location all kinds of different ways that we modify our knives or get others to modify our knives and so I want to talk a little bit about that I want to talk about whether it's a good idea bad idea who you should use how to pick the best person to use whether you do it yourself or not a number of different issues surrounding this whole subject matter okay so this will be a lot of fun and I've got this this knife here as an example I would like to hear from you guys down below uh, what what modification have you done to a knife and and what have you number one what have you really enjoyed and then the other thing I would like to hear I'd love to have you share some horror stories down below now if something worked out really badly between you and a particular individual I don't want you to just air your dirty laundry here uh, but I would like to know if if something bad has ever happened maybe you personally took a knife apart and you know messed it up royally uh, or you sent it to someone else and, and now the knife is no good. And I, I think there are quite a few of those stories out there, but I, I'd love to hear the other side as well, where things worked out amazing and now this is the mo your most favorite knife that's ever existed. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this discussion by just introducing a little bit of history here. The knife that stands out to me as being one of the most modified and most mainstream knives to modify had to be the Boker Quaken. I'll roll a picture in here. Now the Boker Quaken lent itself to being modified because it was pretty simple construction because it was titanium slab that you could take those slabs off and work on them then put them back on pretty easily but also uh, someone figured out fairly early on and I can't think of his name if someone would comment with that down below that would be helpful uh, that if you cut the back corner now this is not a Boker Quaken this is a real steel Megalodon uh, and it's here because it's just plain titanium so I wanted to kind of use it as an example of a knife that uh, could lend itself to modification pretty easily. Anyway, the Boker Quaken was just square at the top and someone figured out that if you cut off an angle right here, you could make it into a flipper knife. And that was a really cool mod and one that worked really well and, and everyone was doing that for a while. Uh, Nowadays, it's it's every knife, okay? If you go on Instagram, you see tons and tons of pictures of modified knives. Now, I don't get into that too much, um, and there are a few reasons and, and I'll, I'll probably share those with you as we go through our discussion of the different points that I want to bring up. But for now, uh, let's just point out, we, we know what it is. We know that there's some knives who that really lend themselves to modification, usually because they're just a little bit too plain, but also, okay, it's not only because they're too plain, some knives have a standout feature, right? That we just don't love. And so uh, you may remember the Apostle P modification on the, uh, the Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter. And I did that to my Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter and I do think it improves the knife. Uh, so there are some knives that just have some minor little tweak that can be done to them fairly easily that really improves the, the performance or the comfort or even the aesthetics of the knife. So let's go ahead and, oh, I guess one more point we ought to make is that if you're an Instagram guy and I am on Instagram, uh, you can find me, I'll put my, uh, I'll put a link to my Instagram in the description box of this video. Uh, but if you're on Instagram and you are in the knife community, you see a ton of modified knives and you see a ton of knife modders who are posting their work on Instagram to kind of gain a following and, and show people what they're able to do. And that's a lot of fun and it be, kind, of, kind of becomes a, a fun, interesting, cool part of the hobby. Okay, now. Let's talk about some of the ins and outs of that. And I want to say this, I don't want to put anyone off of this practice, okay? I think it's a cool thing to do. And, and if you want to make your knife neon purple with a, 
with a black blade and, and dragon's fire on it and, you know, put a, a lanyard on it that's in the shape of a dragon. Hey, that's all the power to you. That's, that makes it a real artistic piece and, uh, and that's great. My son would probably really like it. Generally, I'm not a huge fan of modifying my knives. And generally, if you're de doing any kind of trade with me, I'm not usually into buying or trading for modified knives. That's just me. I know there's tons of people out there who are really into it. Um, but I do think there are some things you need to think about uh, before you kind of jump in with both feet and give someone a lot of money to make changes to a knife you probably already paid a lot of money for. Okay, so what should you consider before you pimp your knife? Number one, and probably most importantly, do I love this knife so much that I never plan to get rid of it? Okay, because one of the, by, by its very nature, modifying a knife kind of makes it uniquely yours. Okay, which is great, and that's super cool to have something special that no one else has, but you may also end up with something that no one else wants. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're thinking about modifying a knife, okay? The other thing you need to think about is, am I okay with losing a little bit of money here? Okay, one of the things that you should remember is you, you will rarely or never get the money out that you put in in pimping a knife, and you may end up losing money, okay? Just because of that reason I said before. Um, well, that's one of the reasons, but two, serious collectors, a lot of serious collectors are only interested in knives with factory specs. They even want, you know, to have the factory edge still on the knife. And so changing it right away moves it out of their, their category of interest, right? All of a sudden, you've lost a large segment of potential buyers for your knife if you've made any kind of modification for it. The other thing is you've lost all the, the buyers who just don't like the modification you made, okay? So are you prepared to lose a little bit of money? At the very least, the money you pay the pimper because it will almost never be recouped in the sale and will often lower the knife uh, in price from what you could have gotten for it unmodified, okay? And finally, am I going to be okay or can I afford for this knife to get messed up, all right? Because it does happen, there are tons of stories out there where someone sends a knife for modification and it comes back and, and it looks beautiful but the action is now terrible or the detent is ruined or the edge is totally messed up or any number of things that can go wrong, okay? You're taking this apart and you're working on it and so when you do that, there is the potential for damage, all right? So, uh, you know, I can tell you I've heard some real horror stories, and I've seen some real horror stories, and I've even had some real horror stories. I've bought a few knives. I bought a Zero Tolerance 0801, I believe, that was poorly, poorly modified. And I had a lot of work to get that back to a knife that looked really good. And when I was done, I did, you know, I, I was able to order all new hardware from ZT. I had to fit, refinish all the surfaces. I ordered, oh, I also had to order a new clip. That had been completely ruined. Um, what else did I have to do? Anyway, it was a lot of work, okay, to get that knife. And, and all it was is somebody trying to modify their knife that just didn't know what they were doing. And they completely messed it up. All, most of the screws were stripped, like things were bent, and it was, a, it was a bad deal, okay? Now, I got the knife for a song, so I didn't mind doing that work. Uh, and once I was done cleaning it up and getting it ready, it worked out okay. But I, I just want to warn you that it can go really, really wrong, okay? So, now that you've thought through all of those things, and, and those reasons that I've kind of listed to you are the reasons that I normally don't modify my knives, all right, with some exceptions, and I will share those exceptions with you um, as we kind of go along. So, first off, I want to pimp my knife. I've decided, you know, this knife, let's, let's keep picking on this knife since it's pretty plain. I've looked at it and I've decided, you know, I just don't like some aspect of the knife. I'm going to send it away and I'm going to have someone, you know, put a, put a polish on this and, and anodize it green or blue or whatever, bronze, okay? Generally, by the way, I kind of like bronze, so if I, I have that option, I'll go with it. So, uh, you know, I decide I'm going to do this bronze, I'm going to do the hardware, you know, blue, and so I've sent some emails about how much it's going to cost. I want to switch this clip out so that it can be a milled titanium clip. And I've sent some emails to guys and see to see how much it would cost to do all that. And I've picked a guy that I think can do the work and can do a good job. Okay, 
or I've decided now that I'm going to send some emails out to see about getting this work done. So let's let's think through what I should do about this. One, I guess the, the obvious question would be, can I do this work myself? Right? If all I'm going to do is, is change the color on the hardware, let's say. Well, it's pretty easy for me to take this hardware out, send it off somewhere to be worked on, to be anodized, or sometimes with popular knives, you can go on eBay and buy new hardware for this. So that stuff I can easily do myself. Even the clip, right? I can, I can switch, switch a clip out pretty easily. And again, I can probably go on eBay and find uh, pre-done clips, milled titanium clips that I could buy for this and throw on here. Okay, so those are those are kind of things that I can do myself. Even anodizing, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna electro anodize, that's not terribly difficult, right? You can you can run a current through of some water and drop your knife in it. Not very difficult, right? Uh, I mean, take the knife apart first and just drop the part you want to change the color of, but you get where I'm going. There are some things that I can do myself. All right, here's a great example. This is my XM18. And if you go to Hinder's website, there are tons and tons of options. Now, I haven't done too many things to this. I've got uh, copper uh, standoffs in here, and I've got the blue clip. Now, I've thought about, and I still may change out the hardware. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but these things are, you know, you can go right to Hinderer's website, you can order it directly for the model that you have, and you have all kinds of different options of what you can put in here for hardware. You can change the scale, you can change this internal liner, as you can see, you can change the clip, you can change the standoffs. Even these little inserts are popular to switch out. Okay, and all of that is easily available from Hinderer's website for very affordable prices. Okay, it's not even, you know, it's not even going to break the bank to, to really pimp out your Hinderer in all kinds of different ways. Uh, and that, again, is something I can easily do myself. It doesn't cost too much. And so that's, you know, this knife I have made some slight modification to, and I do really like it. All right, so that's a good example of something I can pretty easily handle. All right, now. The next question would be, uh, do I, what if I'm gonna, I can't do it. Whatever I wanna do, you know, I don't have uh, something to change voltage. I don't have a good setup for doing electro anodizing or heat anodizing. So I'm gonna send it away to someone else. All right, who am I going to pick? And this becomes pretty difficult because there are a lot of guys out there. There are guys who are really big. There are guys who are really small. There are guys who, you know, do certain types of work. And I would say along these lines, you really, really, really need to do your research. Um, a lot of knife pimpers have, what would you say, have a wheelhouse, okay? They have certain modifications that they do well. And, you know, you kind of want to find the one that is the best at doing whatever it is you want done. One of the ways I have heard of people getting in trouble is, you know, uh, getting in touch with some knife modder and saying, hey, can you do this? And the guy emails back, you know, I don't normally do it, but I can probably pull it off. And they say, okay, great. Uh, send it off to them. And turns out maybe they couldn't do it or they, they hadn't practiced enough and your knife was going to be sort of the guinea pig and the, the guinea pig died, right? <laughs> uh, so do your research and pick someone who's good at doing the kind of thing that you want done, all right? Number two, pick someone who has a good reputation and has done a lot of work and who you can talk to people, who you can find people that have had them do work and you can talk to personally, all right? And especially make sure that it's recent. Here's one of the trends that I've noticed in knife pimpers. Um, a guy begins to get well known and a lot of people start sending him stuff and he ends up with too much workload, rushes to get through it and by rushing his quality drops. Okay. So, you know, you would think, right, you know, kind of a pretty logical thought process would be, Hey, I'm going to pick the guy who tons of people have gone to and who's been doing this for a while and who's really, really popular. You know, yeah, he's got a bit of a waiting list, but that's okay. Uh, it's worth waiting to get good work. Well, that's, that's definitely true, but I have seen some of these really popular guys put out some really bad stuff uh, if they allow themselves to grow too fast and they take on more work than they ought to. Okay, so be aware of that. The other side of that coin is be careful about the new guy, okay, who just decides, you know, maybe he's got his own knife collection. He does some work on some of those, throws them onto my Instagram and says, hey, I did this. Send me your knife and I'll do it to yours too. 
Um, again, that's great, and maybe he'll do a great job, and hopefully he will. Uh, but if he hasn't been doing this long, um, you know, what's what are his business practices like? Maybe he's never engaged in any kind of real business. Maybe it's a teenager working out of his parents' basement, and that doesn't mean he can't do it, but it may mean that you need to coach him a little on how this transaction needs to go, okay? And that brings me to the next point that you ought to make. If you're pretty sure you know who you want to work with, you need to ask them a lot of questions and make sure that everything is known up front, okay? How much is this going to cost me, right? I need a I need a bill or I need a pretty detailed idea of what you're going to do and how much it's going to cost before I send you my knife, right? Um, what are you going to do to my knife? You know, maybe maybe you just love this guy's work and you say, hey, I'm going to send you my knife, do whatever you want to it. That's great and lots of people have done it and had great success, but that, you know, if, if that's not you and if you have very specific expectations, that makes sure that both you and whoever's doing the work for you know what those expectations are, okay? Get references and get recent references, okay? And you better have a conversation before you get into this about what's going to happen if things go wrong. What if you're not happy with the knife when it comes back? Okay, what if the knife gets destroyed, right? What if, you know, he takes it apart and loses a part or, you know, he's, he's grinding the blade and somehow slips and, and ruins it, right? What, what's going to happen then? Is he responsible for that? And I know a lot of you may say, yeah, he's responsible. I'm going to expect him to buy me a new knife. Well, maybe you expect that, but does he right? Is he, does he know that going in? Okay, so make sure you ask a lot of questions and you work out the details ahead of time so that you know how this is going to go and you know what's going to happen if something goes wrong. All right, remember that sometimes this could be a guy that maybe he doesn't have any more money than you do and he can't afford a $400 knife any more than you can afford a $400 knife. And now he, he ruins your, your hinderer or Sabenza or Riyadh or whatever and is like, dude, I can't afford to buy you another one, right? Uh, what are you going to do then? Okay, so finally, uh, so make sure that you vet people and make sure that you've got everything figured out beforehand. Now, I want to give another example before we finally talk about what modifications to do. I'm going to bring in my Curtis here. And this Curtis has some changes made to it from Dave before, right, right from the start. So there's some different colored hardware uh, and I guess that's it. I went with the different colored hardware. <laughs> no need for an and there. And it is amazing. And Dave does a fantastic job with his anodizing and is really well known to do so. And if you follow him on Instagram, you've seen like this is nothing, right? You've seen some really impressive work. Now, if I wanted to modify this knife, you know what I would do with it? I would send it straight back to Dave, right? And the same would be true. Uh, I've got a couple of other knives here. And if I, I, that I, I've got a couple of knives in my collection. I don't have them with me here. But if I wanted to make a change to my Swish, let's say, I would be sending it back to Eugene at Olamic and say, hey, could you, could you do this or that? And, and maybe I would even just send the part. Now, you can see this is going to be a little bit of a pain to take apart, so I would probably send Dave the whole knife and let him deal with it, uh, but uh, Olamics tend to be a little easier to take down, and so in that case, I would probably, you know, if I wanted an anodized backspacer, let's say, I'd just take the backspacer out, send it down to Eugene, and have him do the work and send it back to me, right? And, and these guys are really, really good about doing that, and generally, um, getting one thing done isn't crazy, crazy expensive. Now, I will say Dave is a little steep. Uh, Curtis's are expensive knives to begin with and getting extra work done on them is pretty expensive, but it is a custom knife and that kind of goes with the territory. All right, let's pull in just a couple other knives for eye candy while we finish things off. Here's a knife that, again, I would. this is the one I would think about getting some work done on. Um, the screws here, it would be nice to see these in a blue or purple rather than the color they are. I think it would just nicely match up with the Mokutai. Uh, so let's throw him in here, put the hinderer back, and uh, what the heck, let's throw the real steel back in just because I've been talking about it a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead now and uh, ask a couple questions, a couple last things. What work do you want to do? Okay, now you, you decided, hey, I'm going to pimp this knife. Let's say I've got this Curtis and I say, it's just too plain for me. I want to do something else. I'm going to put some kind of pattern on the handle. Well, 
Um, what, what should I do? Uh, first, I would talk to Dave and I'd say, look, what are my options? What, what do you think would look good with the color of the hardware already? And a lot of times the, the maker or modifier will have some input, input for you. But here are the things that I would say by way of recommendation, okay? One, um, don't go too crazy. Don't make it so outlandish that it, it becomes gaudy, okay? Try to keep it classy. Try to keep it understated, okay? One of the reasons I like the way this hinder is with just the standoffs done is because if I just show you the knife, you may not even notice, and then you're like, oh wait, yeah, there's that cool little feature. Okay, so, you know, I like to keep things a little bit understated. Now that's just my personality, and maybe it's not yours, but I will say this, if you're gonna sell the knife later, that's probably gonna work more in your favor to have just a light touch instead of a, a major, major change. And so think carefully about the modifications you're going to make because uh, you, a lot of the modifications we're talking about can't be easily undone, right? It's, it's like getting a tattoo for your knife. You're not gonna, you're not taking it off very easily or very cheaply. All right, so there you go, guys. That are, those are my thoughts on modifying knives. And, and because of a lot of the things I've mentioned here, I don't normally go for it. There are a couple of things that I've thought about doing from time to time. And I did, as I say, do the, uh, uh, the Apostle modification to my Cold Steel uh, Ultimate Hunter. But outside of that, I don't do a lot of modifications. And I probably won't. And I don't love them uh, for knives that I'm going to be buying or trading for. So generally, I'm going to avoid those. And I know a lot of other people are as well. So there you go, guys. Quick, quick summary. Uh, think carefully about what modifications you're going to make. Decide whether or not you're willing to potentially lose your knife or at least potentially lose some money in this deal because you most often will. Be careful about picking who you choose to do that work. There are a lot of great guys out there, but there are also a lot of horror stories. So make sure you do your due diligence. And finally, make the changes classy and cool and, and try, you know, don't, unless again, unless you're very, very sure, don't go too far over the top. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear your comments. I asked for a number of different comments in here and I'd love to hear those in the comment section down below. That's all I've got. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will talk to you soon.